Hello everybody, this video is going to be a doozy because the last time we looked at what was new in Foundry was back in the 0.5.6 update. Since then we've gotten all the way to 0.7.5 and some massive features along with a bunch of small ones were included and on top of that performance has gone way up. Here's how it's going to work. I've broken this video into themes so people can get updates on what they're most interested in. Those themes are combat, dice rolling, lighting and fog of war, performance improvements, improvements to installing modules and worlds, roll tables, folders and compendia, and then a whole slew of improvements that don't fit into any of those categories. There's great stuff in each one though, so I hope you'll stick around for all of it. Before we get into all of that good stuff though, there's a few very important things to remember here. The update is very new, and as a result, not all of the module developers have been able to update their modules to work with the new version just yet. That doesn't mean that they'll definitely break, but it does mean that they may not work as expected, and also they might break. So, if something isn't working, please disable all of your modules if Foundry didn't do it for you automatically, and see if that fixes the issue. If it does, re-enable your modules one by one until you find the offending module and then be sure to check the Discord to see if anyone's reported it and, if not, please let the module developer know so that they can get to work on a fix. While you're there though, please be patient and please be kind because the developers are working hard and don't get paid for creating their modules, so it might take some time before they can get it working. Feel free to stay on 0.6.6 .6 for a little while longer so other people can find all of these bugs for you. The next very important thing is to please back up all of your content before updating just in case there are any issues. You can do that on Windows by right-clicking on your Foundry application and selecting View User Data and copying everything in those folders to another location. If you're on a Mac, then open up Foundry, go to your Configuration tab, and copy the User Data Path. Then open Finder, click Go in the top menu, and select Go to Folder and paste that in. Then you can copy everything in there to another location. The last very important thing is that if you haven't updated already, I would recommend downloading the installer from the Foundry website and installing it using that because Foundry uses Chromium and Electron to run the application and using the built-in updater won't update those pieces of the software, but using the installer will. With the preamble out of the way, let's go ahead and look at some of these great new features. When we boot up Foundry, the first thing we see is the world and module screen, so let's start there. First off is the addition of the Install World button, which makes it so we can install worlds the same way we do modules. If we click on it, we'll see the Clash of the Cobalt Cauldron, which we can install and be ready to run in just a few seconds. If we click in to edit one of our worlds, there's now checkboxes for disabling all active modules and for resetting all of our players' access keys in case they've forgotten them. Let's launch the world now to see one of my favorite features, the Return to Setup button. That's right, no more being forced to log into a world, just to return to setup. All you have to do is enter your administrator access key, which does have to be set to get access to this feature, otherwise anyone could kick you back to the setup screen, and then you're back. While we're here, let's take a detour to the module installation screen. If we hit install module, we'll see that we've got lots of new filtering options to the left and some filters at the top, which uh, will make finding the modules we're looking for much easier. There's similar functionality included in the manage module section of your worlds as well. So if we log in, you can see all of your modules, just the active modules, just the inactive modules, or search through them as well as this arrow button up at the top that will collapse all of your modules or expand them if you need to see their details. Let's change gears and take a quick look at a few changes to the combat system. I'll just add these tokens to combat and pop out the tracker with a right click. If you right click on any of the combatants in the tracker now, you'll see an update combatant option which will let you change their name, image, and initiative. Another new feature is that if you add an overlay effect on a token by left or right clicking on it, it will be reflected in the tracker. If you apply the defeated condition, it will also mark the actor as defeated in the tracker. While we're in combat, let's take a look at some dice rolling improvements. Here's a handful of examples of the new things that you can do. You can add flavor text to different parts of roll formulas like slash roll 1d6, open bracket, slashing damage, close bracket, plus 1d8, open bracket, fire damage, close bracket. There's also now a coin flip, which can be run with something like slash roll 4dc to roll four coins. There's also a new explode once XO dice 
roll modifier, which will produce exploding dice, but only for the initially rolled set, not recursively for additional rolls. For example, slash r 10d10 x2 equals 10 will roll d10, uh, sorry, will roll 10 d10 and roll an additional d10 if a 10 is rolled, at most two times. Another new dice roll modifier was added that will subtract the value of failures from the total roll. For example, slash roll 4d4 sf less than 3 will roll four uh, will roll four four-sided dice and subtract the values of dice which roll less than 3 from the total. We've also got a new dice roll modifier that will deduct the number of failures from the total roll. For example, slash roll 4df or 4d4df less than 3 will roll four four-sided dice and subtract the number of dice which roll less than 3 from the total. Foundry also expanded the dice roll uh, syntax for re-roll and explode modifiers to support setting maximum number of explosions or re-rolls which can be allowed to occur. For example, slash roll 66x3 equals 6 will explode when a 6 is rolled, but only up to a maximum of 3 times. Now let's take a look at one of my absolute favorite new set of features in 0.7.5, which are big updates to the lighting system and fog of war. First off, we're going to take a look at a change to global illumination. Global illumination lights up the entire map, which can be great when you're outside during the day, but sometimes you want to disable it as it gets near to night or as your players go indoors. This is now doable because of the global illumination threshold setting, which when checked will disable global illumination whenever the darkness goes above the value you indicate. Now you can just increase the darkness a bit or transition fully to night to get back to normal token and light based vision. There have also been updates to the way Fog of War reacts to your tokens moving around. Originally, it only revealed more of the map when your movement was finished, but now as your token moves, the shadows will smoothly be revealed, which looks awesome. This effect can be disabled in the settings to maintain performance on older machines, so if you're experiencing any lag, I'd try giving that a try. A similar feature is available in the settings, but turned off by default and can only be enabled by the DM, which reveals the map as a player drags their token around, which can definitely be abused in a metagaming way since no one, including the DM, can see when you're dragging your token around until, you finally, until you've placed them in their final position. Another great new feature that will be useful for those of you with familiars or other controlled tokens is that when a player takes control of a token that doesn't have vision, the player's vision will become a unified view of all of the tokens that they have at least observer permissions on. Now for the real eye candy, the brand new animation effects that have been added to lights. There's a whole bunch of new animations that cover things like torch flicker, spooky fog, energy fields, pulses, different kinds of darkness, and even more. You can control their color, the intensity of the animation, and the speed of the animation to get a bunch of great effects. You can even start stacking multiple lights on top of each other to get some cool combinations and add a whole new level of immersion to your maps. And a lot of these would even look great as makeshift spell templates for things like Liaman's Tiny Hut or to show a camera's line of sight in a game like Cyberpunk. On top of all these great new light animations, there is also a whole new type of light called the universal light. When you select the universal light option, it will be visible from anywhere on the map regardless of walls, and the light itself will ignore walls. A few other small features are things like being able to right click on a light to toggle it on or off. Changes to the lights are now visible as you make them. You can use shift in your scroll wheel to rotate lights that have a reduced angle of emission and a whole bunch of performance improvements that we'll look at along with all of the other improvement, uh, performance improvements now. Most of the performance improvements came from changes to the line of sight system. Without diving into too much technical detail, there are some massive performance gains because Foundry now uses something called a quad tree data structure that breaks the canvas into smaller pieces to test against. In his developer streams, Atropo showed small maps improving by about 1.5x and very large maps improving anywhere from 10 to 100x, which is just nuts. Beyond the algorithmic and data structure improvements, you can also take performance into your own hands a bit by setting a maximum frame rate. Since overwhelmingly there's not that much going on in any given foundry map that requires a high frame rate, cutting this down to 30 FPS should be a big improvement with very little cost and everyone can set their own. So if you've got that 
keen competitive FPS sight, you can go higher, or if you're used to playing at low settings with 15 FPS average, feel free to drop it even lower. And this last one is more of a bandwidth performance improvement, but if you're using a lot of large audio files like multi-hour long tavern songs you ripped from YouTube, you can select the checkbox large file streaming in their sound configuration so your players don't have to download it all at once. Definitely be judicious with this though, any file under 15 megabytes is probably fine to be used the normal way. For all of the roll table fans out there, there's a few nice quality of life features available to you now, like the ability to use HTML and roll table entries, so you can use things like bold or italics. Now when you drag and drop entities onto roll tables, it will automatically fill out the entry with the correct entity type so you don't have to worry about it. You can also add an image to roll tables or use any of the included foundry icons so that they're easier to differentiate in the sidebar. And there are also some changes to roll table permissions. If you give a user limited permission on a roll table and create a macro to roll on it for your players, uh, they can use that macro but still not be able to open your roll table and see all of the options. I'm including some macro code in the description that you can use, and all you have to do is create a script macro and replace the insert table name here text with uh, the name of your table, and you'll be good to go. The new features that were added to folders in the sidebar and compendia aren't showy, but they will make some things a lot easier for folks. First off, you can now right-click on a folder and set it to sort alphabetically or manually. It won't apply to subfolders, however, which may be a good or a bad thing depending on how you like to organize things, but you can always right-click on those subfolders and do the same thing to them. While you're right-clicking on folders, you can also see a new Configure Permissions option, which lets you control player access to all of the folder's items, but again, not the items within its subfolders. You can also click to create a rollable table or a compendium from all of the items in the folder, which, again, does not include items within subfolders. If you want to add items to a compendium, you have to have already created a compendium that uses the correct type like actors or items. The new active effects and time system are tricky features to mention because they're almost exclusively a backend code feature, but it's going to mean big changes in various systems and modules. Let's start with the description of what it is. The active effects system is a way for various things like items and spells to cause a change to a token settings like their AC or their resistance or any number of things. It interacts with the new server time functionality so that the effects can be limited in game time to things like turns. You aren't going to see any immediately obvious results of this change, but module developers like Tim Posny are already hard at work on modules like the Dynamic Active Effects module for the D&D 5e system, which can be used to start applying and tracking effects on your tokens. You can expect some more content on this in the future. In the meantime, this is a huge backbone feature that a lot of awesome things will continue to be built on, so be excited for what's to come. Now we're into the random grab bag of improvements that didn't fit into any of the categories but are still good enough to tell you about. So pardon me if this is a little disjointed and just enjoy the ride. We'll start with some of my favorites, a few improvements to chat. If you cast a spell like Spiritual Weapon and it gets sent to the chat, it can be really annoying to have to constantly resend it to, resend it to the chat or scroll up when it's your turn to make an attack and then scroll back up to roll the damage if you hit. Now you can right click on any attack or spell card and pop it out so you can use it easily. Another new feature in the right click menu is the make private buttons that both DMs and players have access to. If a player uses it, the card remains visible to the DM, but it can save a player who meant to send something privately. Another great new feature for chat is the ability to type slash GM to message everyone with the GM permission and slash players to send something to everyone with the player permission and slash reply to send a message to the last person who sent you a whisper. A real quick but boring feature is that there's now a display rulers permission which controls visibility of measurements to connected players so you can keep your players from seeing what you or other players are measuring out on the map. When you drag and drop uh, anything onto the canvas from the sidebar. If you hold Alt while doing it, it will place the item with its visibility turned off so you can sneakily add combatants without your player seeing them. This also works for placed tiles. In a token settings, uh, you can also apply a tent if you want to show them as diseased or something like that. Uh, the buttons in the sidebar have been moved to the top, so you don't have to move all the way to the bottom of your screen. If you click on one of them, you'll also see uh, that the window it opens now appears directly by the sidebar as well, instead of the center of the screen. 
If we hit create scene, I can demo another new feature, which is that you can use HTML inside of scene titles now as well. If you make your scenes with tiles instead of background images, Foundry will create a thumbnail image based on the tiles. If you've already got a background image and want to change it, Foundry won't change the scene dimensions that you've set unless uh, they're blanked out. This should save people who have tweaked their map sizes due to grid issues or things like that from having to redo that work. It's also easier to view scenes now. If you right click on a scene in the sidebar, you can hit view to look at the scene without having to add it to the navigation or activate it first, which is a small but very meaningful improvement for me. Uh, there's some changes to the drawing tools as well that should make freehand drawing a little smoother because improvements to the Bezier smoothing. When you change controls uh, over here in the left-hand sidebar, Foundry also now remembers what tool you were, you were using last, which is a nice little time saver. On top of that, whenever you have a tool selected like the token tool or the tiles tool, uh, if you press control and A, it will select everything under that type of tools control, like all tokens on the map or all drawings. If we go to the player configuration screen, we can see that there's now a checkbox for revealing their access key if they have one set. You can also manage player permissions from this screen, which is a nice logical place for it to be while still allowing users to edit it from the configure settings window if they want to. Speaking of settings, one of the best new features is that the deselect module is now integrated into Foundry. What that means is that if we check the left click to release objects checkbox, here we can deselect tokens, drawings, etc. just by left clicking, so no more having to left click and drag to get off of a token. A related clicking improvement is that the back and forward keys on your mouse will now give a pop-up in Foundry so you won't drop from your game because of an accidental click. There's a new hotkey for changing through your layers of macros now as well. Just hold the Alt key and press any number between 1 and 5 to switch to that layer. Lastly, there are 3,500 new icons for commodities, containers, environments, equipment, sundries, tools, and weapons added to Foundry, which can be assigned to your spells, rollable tables, items, and anything else that you might want an icon on. This should help you get rid of a whole bunch of mystery man icons and replace them with fitting and consistent art. That was a whole mess of a lot of features. I hope that you stuck through the whole thing because there were some gems hidden in every section, but regardless of whether you did or not, I hope that this was useful in giving an overview and demo of all the new features in Foundry VTT. If there's anything you want to know more about, uh, please let me know in the comments. In the meantime, let's all give a massive thanks to Atropos for the gigantic amount of work that went into this release. It was a long time coming, but I think the value of the feature speaks for themselves and proves that it was worth it. And I'd like to give another huge thank you to the amazing developers, mods, community helpers, and all of the everyday users in the Foundry Discord who have been doing an amazing job of adding functionality, supporting anyone with issues, and helping people learn all of these new features. Your work is unglamorous and often without thanks, but helps make the Foundry community what it is. So if you're heading into the Discord, please keep in mind the time spent by these users and show them the kindness and the respect that they deserve. Thank you all for watching. Stay safe out there, vote, and I will see you in the next one.